General Mills presents Bride and Groom. The honor of your presence is requested at the wedding of Miss Gladys Jane Lubert and Mr. Everett Ralph Jacobson. And our service today will be conducted by Reverend Walter Martin of the Fort George Church. And Walter, since uh, you're already acquainted with the young couple, perhaps you'd like to introduce them to us. Certainly, Phil. I'd like you to meet Gladys Jane Lubert of Greenwich, Connecticut. Gladys? And uh, Everett Ralph Jacobson of Nutley, New Jersey. Well, Everett, very happy to know you, sir. And uh, how about just a little back, quick background on these two? All right, Phil. Gladys is 20 years of age, and she's been studying at the Nyack Missionary Training Institute in Nyack for the mission field. Oh, wonderful. And uh, Everett is 25 years old. He spent a couple of years in the Army and has been studying at Shelton College in New York City. Wonderful. And incidentally, Phil, he's my brother-in-law. Oh, he's your brother-in-law. Well, that's how you know so much about these two. Well, uh, it certainly seems as though you two were destined for each other, but how could you help knowing it? Well, it took us six years to find out. I knew Ev's sister, and I accidentally met her on a boat ride up the Hudson, and she introduced me to Ev. And I thought he was very handsome, but I was interested in lots of different boys at the time. Ah. I thought Gladys was pretty, but she was five years younger than me. You were an old man. Oh, no. <laughs> At the time, I, I just came out of the Army, and I was looking for a girl to go steady with. And I thought Gladys was much too young. Well, that sounds more like the end than the beginning of anything. Well, Ed and I dated off and on for two years. And in all this time, he never even held my hand or kissed me. And at the end of the two years, he offered me his class ring, but I refused. You I were, thought I was too young. You refused? Yes. Well, that cooled me off a little bit. And uh, later when I found out class was going to Bible school and was so interested in missions, I sort of felt left out. That sounds like you two parted company for a little while. How, how long yes, was it? for about two years because I went away to school. And then I was invited to Reverend Martin's wedding. Mm -hmm. And I met Ev again for the first time. After two years? Yes. Had you, uh, did you figure out that you changed? Well, I thought Ev had changed. He was more sincere, and I thought he loved the Lord more. And then I found out that we had so much in common. Gladys hadn't changed, because when I saw her, I knew that she was the only girl in the world for me. I had become engaged to another girl since I'd last seen Gladys. But the moment I saw Gladys, I knew that she was the one, and I had to have her. The only trouble was uh, she was engaged to another fellow at the time. Engaged to another boy. What would you do about it? I proposed. <laughs> oh, wonderful. And after all that, I got so mixed up, I just didn't know where I stood. And it took me six months to give him his answer. Six months to say yes? Well, what happened in the meantime? Well, Gladys wrote me a letter saying that she never wanted to see me again. I took the letter to my brother-in-law, Reverend Martin, for some advice. And he advised me to just let Gladys know and let her have her own way and that the Lord's will would be done. And you, Gladys? And then one day, we start going together again. And one day, I promised him his answer in a week. And so that week, I really prayed. And Saturday morning, I still didn't have my answer. So I got down, I opened up my Bible, and I read... Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And then I knew that everything was right and we were for each other. Well, it certainly has worked out beautifully. And, Eva, I understand you've decided to enter the mission field with uh, Gladys. And someday after you finish school, I hope to be sent to Africa where you can do some really wonderful work. That's our sincere hope. Well, two are certainly better than one when they're as happy as you two are. And uh, I see some smiles over here. Uh, some other people are happy, too. And you look perfectly wonderful in your Skinner bridal satin gown, Gladys. This is Everett's sister, Philip Jacobson, who is our flower girl. Phyllis. And this is Mrs. Elaine Martin, who is my matron of honor. This is Martin. How do you do? And this is my brother, David, who's going to give me away, David Lubert. David. And this is my best man, Glass's brother, John. Well, John, as best man, would you uh, please take care of these beautifully matched keepsake wedding rings? The circlet of stones, of course, is for our bride, and the handsome matching gold band is for our groom. You would take charge of those. And to match this happy occasion, Johnny Thompson would like to sing your wedding request as you leave for the chapel at dawning.
forsaking all others, remain with her only so long as you both shall live. I will. Gladys, will you have Everett to be your wedded husband? Will you love him and honor him in sickness and in health, and obey him in the Lord, forsaking all others so long as you both shall live? I will. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? My mother and I do. I ever take thee, Gladys, for my wedded wife. I ever take thee, Gladys, for my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. And thereto I pledge thee my faith. I, Gladys, take thee, Everett, for my wedded husband. I, Gladys, take thee, Everett, for my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. In sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. And to obey in the Lord till death us do part. And to obey in the Lord till death us do part. And thereto I give thee my faith. And thereto I give thee my faith. The ring is the golden symbol of eternity, the physical representation of spiritual union before the Lord. This ring I give thee, this ring I give thee, in token of my solemn faith and constant love, in token of my solemn faith and constant love, and with it now I thee wed, and with it now I thee wed, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This ring I give thee, this ring I give thee in token of my solemn faith and constant love in token of my solemn faith and constant love and with it now I thee wed and with it now I thee wed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit let us pray Almighty God our Father we thank thee for this privilege of joining these two together in the Lord Jesus Christ grant that their lives may ever remain in accord with thy will through the same Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Amen. Those whom God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Insomuch as Everett and Gladys have agreed together in holy marriage before God and this company, and have declared this intention by giving and receiving a ring, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I pronounce that they are man and wife in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and make his face to shine upon you, that as his children by faith in his Son Jesus, you may abide forever in the center of his will, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now all we can wish for them is a long life together and much happiness. But first of all, a wonderful honeymoon. And it will be wonderful because they'll be driven to the airport in a 1953 dual streak Pontiac, and then it's all aboard a luxurious Allegheny airliner that will wing them down to the Allegheny Mountains where honeymoon reservations are waiting at the beautiful Bedford Springs Hotel in Bedford Springs, Pennsylvania. Their cordial greetings will be extended by manager G. Bland Hulk, and there, too, the warm welcome of an exciting resort with tennis on the championship courts, golf, fine dining parties, and, of course, the whole beautiful vista of Green Mountains to explore and enjoy together. Yes, they'll find everything from horseback riding and hay rides to dinner parties and dancing, but most of all, they'll find themselves having a wonderful honeymoon at the Bedford Springs Hotel, and here they come now. And congratulations. All the very best to you both. Mine too, eh? Thank well, you. and happiness to both of them. Let's get right on to the end of those wedding gifts now, shall we? How about first, 12 complete place settings of beautiful Queen Bess silverware designed by the master silversmiths of Oneida. And for the housewife, a General Mills automatic toaster and the General Mills true heat iron has a separate steam iron attachment too. Now for the honeymooners, a set of sturdy Samsonite luggage. There's a wardrobe and train case for you, Gladys, and a roomy Samsonite journeyer for you, Ev. And for your new home, the beautiful Arroyo carpet from the looms of Mohawk. This blend of choice wool and lustrous carpet rayon will make your mohawk a thing of beauty in your home and a joy practically forever. Mm -hmm. Now, in the kitchen, there'll be a brand new Westinghouse frost-free refrigerator, and you'll like having a separate freezer compartment, a full-width humidor, and you'll also like the fact that you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. No kitchen's complete without a stove. And yours will be the 1953 tap and gas range that has all those exclusive time-saving features that make for the slogan, good foods just happen when you're cooking on a tap. And you'll also receive Betty Crocker's famous picture cookbook, and as a part gift from our sponsors, a talking motion picture film of Bride and Groom, of which, believe me, we were very privileged to attend. 